We are recording. This is the Art and Science of Business Building for Coaches, July 29th, 7 p.m. All right, welcome everyone. So tonight we're going to be talking about, um, I call it showing leadership in the close. But another way of thinking about it, of it is, what do we do when the client says yes to working with us? In other words, what do we do when the client says, okay, this coaching, this is something that I'm interested in, uh, how does it all work? Now, this is kind of where the deer in the headlights come for a lot of coaches, and, and it did for me for, for quite a few years. So we're going to be talking about that tonight. Um, and Barb, if you could put click your mute button, just so we keep this uh, recording fresh. Um, the mute button is down in the bottom left. If you just click that little microphone, that will mute you. Um, so a few little Zoom things before we, before we start tonight. Um, okay, so the Coaches Cafe is really, there's five of them each month. There's five in July, August, and September. And we've got a program coming up with Ericsson in, on um, October 2nd called The Art and Science of Business Building for Coaches. And it's really a program to help the coaches who have gone through Ericsson, so it's Ericsson coaches only. It's a program to help the coaches who've gone through Ericsson and now they've, they've, they've learned some skills, they've learned some tools, some processes, they've learned the skill of coaching. And that skill, by the way, will, will, will develop for the rest of your life. But then there's the other piece of the entrepreneurship. You know, there's, there's, there's the coaching and then there's the business of coaching. And so this is what this program in, in, in October is all about. Tonight is just to give you an example, give you a, um, a bit of a taste of what the program will be like. The environment, some of the content that we'll be looking into and we're talking about tonight. So content we're talking about tonight is from the program. Um, and also, I'll share a little bit at the end of the call today. I'll leave five or ten minutes just to talk about the structure of the program, what exactly is involved in the program, and, and, and how else might you find some information about it. So that's what we're up to. Now, in terms of our content tonight, we're going to be talking about, you know, what do you do when the client says yes, but we're also going to be talking about anything that you want to talk about tonight in terms of building your coaching business um, that's all up for grabs. The, 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 once we're finished with our part, about 10 minute talk, then we'll open it up for questions about that piece or about anything in general around the, uh, either the coaching program, the business building program, or any questions, anything that you're bumping up against in your own business of coaching, anything that's coming up that you're thinking, I know there's a few um, students tonight that are looking into building their business and there are a few that are already uh, in their business building it. So we're going to take any questions and all uh, questions from that. Um, all right, we have uh, a mute button down the bottom on the left. There's also a camera button next to the mute button. Again, it's optional to use your camera, but I do encourage everyone to use their camera just so that we can wave and say hello and get to know each other a little bit more outside of, you know, all blank, <laughs> just names. It's nice to be able to, to see each other. It's nice to be able to uh, you know, the emotional brain likes to feel like, hey, I'm in good company. And so one of the ways that we can calm the emotional brain is to, is to visually see the people. So it's always nice. See, I'm looking at Susan now, and I already feel calmer. <laughs> all right. If I wasn't already in my pajamas, Dermot, I would be all about the video. I'm on that East Coast time. I'm already in my PJs. <laughs> good enough. Good enough, Kellyanne. All good. I've got a shirt and tie on, but below it is my feet. <laughs> All right. So let's jump in. Um, da -da -da. I'm just checking my notes here. Okay. One thing I do want to find out, Kellyanne uh, and Barb and Jennifer. Down on the bottom, there's a chat box. If you click on the chat box, you'll, uh, you'll see a little chat box there. Would you mind putting in the chat box for me? This is the only thing I will ask of you tonight is how did you find out about the Coaches Cafe? Did somebody tell you? Did you go to the Ericsson Facebook page? Did you, um, did a little birdie come in your window and sing a song about it? Um, the newsletter? Just so I know. Okay, 
email from Erickson. Eric, okay, wonderful. Nobody got any smoke signals or anything to let them know there was a coach's cafe. We're trying that out. It's a, it's a, it's a new kind of marketing technique. Drums, all right, very nice. <laughs> I can do drums. Thank you. Um, da, 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 da. Put in the chat box, if you will, what's the biggest thing you're struggling with in your business? What's the thing that's most getting in the way of you getting clients and making money in your coaching business? What's the thing that's really getting in the way? Because whatever you put in the chat box, I will create a coach's cafe based on that in the future, just as a way to support you. What's getting in the way? All right, Kellyanne says branding and name, okay. What about Jennifer? And I know, Barb, you're looking into coaching, um, so all good. Um, visibility, all right, beautiful, thank you. That's very helpful. Confidence, making sure I'm meeting clients' needs. All right, now if we have time, which we might tonight, uh, we'll talk about some of those as well, okay? All right, okay. Da, da, da. All right, so you all know about the Facebook page. There's the Ericsson Business Facebook page, and I put a, a, a link in the chat there. It's got the brochure, and the, the link above that is to the Ericsson Business Center. And there's a link there to join the community, join the Ericsson Facebook page. On that Facebook page, I post every week, I post a video or a free, free video or free audio, and it's all to do with building your business. So I would absolutely, if you haven't taken advantage of that resource, please do. There's some great videos there. And I post a video uh, about every week. All right, so let's jump in. But before all of that, a wee sip of the green stuff. Okay, we're very professional on this show. All right. Dermot, can you repeat what the what the co what the web the Facebook name is? Yeah, it's the uh, uh, it's the Ericsson Facebook business page, and there's a link in the chat there. If you go to if you go to the top link, it says Ericsson Business Center. You can click on that link, and it'll take you to uh, it'll take you to a sign up page for the Coaches okay. Cafe. And, and on the bottom of that sign-up page, there's a, there's a little button uh, for the brochure, and there's also a button for the um, to sign up on the Ericsson uh, Facebook page. It'll take you. Okay. Yeah, it's got some great videos. I also posted uh, a one-hour um, coaches cafe from last week. We did it on uh, coaching packages. What does your coaching package need to look like? So uh, it was a really good one. So check that out. All right, let's jump in. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Dermot Butterley, and um, I'm, uh, I'm the, uh, the business building person or expert at Ericsson. I'm also uh, a trainer at Ericsson, have been for the last I think, four years. I went through the program, one through five, back in 2012. I was a TA for two years as well. And when I finished the program uh, in 2012, the biggest thing that I came up against was building my business. I, I, I pretty much did, you know, I spent thousands of dollars on a, on, a, uh, on a website. I hired a marketing expert. I spent hours and hours and hours on different social media sites. Um, I did a lot of emailing to people. Um, I just did a lot of things that, that, that we're supposed to do, that I, I was told we're supposed to do as a coach. And um, four and a half years later, I was still making about 20, 20 grand a year coaching. So I, I, I was not doing well in the coaching department at all. I mean, I wasn't even paying my rent. That's why I had 50 kids and now I don't have any. I had to sell them all. <laughs> all right. And so after that, I decided, Dermot, you, you got to do something different. And what I decided to do was, it was like, a, it was like a, a, a light bulb went off. And I decided, you know what? Why don't I hire someone who's actually making money in coaching? Why don't, why don't I hire someone who's actually, you know, making really good money in coaching? and just duplicate what he does. 
Now that had never, that thought had never come to me before. But anyway, poverty is a great way to get inspired. And uh, I hired one of the best guys on the planet. He's the grandfather of coaching. His name is Steve Chandra. And uh, I hired him to help me build my business because I really want, wanted to be a coach. I wanted to be a professional coach. I wanted to make this be my livelihood. I love coaching. But as I said, what I was doing was not working. So within three months of working, I, I hired Steve for six months and he's still my coach today. Within three months of working with, with Steve, I tripled my income. Now, now that got my attention. Within five months of working with Steve, my income just went through the roof. And I thought to myself, Steve, and, 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 and it had nothing to do with um, cold calling and marketing and running after people and getting clients. It had nothing to do with it. It had everything to do with serving people, serving one client at a time. And it sounds really simple, and it is, but it wasn't for me. It's like, you know, it's silly until it's, until it's clear, you know, and then it's like, oh, duh. And I asked Steve, I said, Steve, do you have a program that, that you do? And he said, yeah, I do. And I signed up for the program straight away. It's an on-site program. I said, do you have an online program? And he said, no. And I said, okay, we need to take everything that I've learned from you, put it online. So that's how this program created. What you learn in the program is a way to serve people so powerfully, to go beyond their expectations, to astonish them that they want to work with you. In other words, you sell the experience of coaching and not the concept. So, so let's get into that a little bit tonight. Okay. So when I started getting clients, when I started working with Steve and, and, and my calendar started to get full of clients, I said, well, Steve, this is great. But I said, now what? <laughs> like, like what do, how, do I, how do I close the deal with the client? I didn't know. No one had ever told me that. And it sounds really simple, but no one had, ever, had never trained me on how to do that. And, and I said, Steve, is, is it pretty common that coaches don't know how to close a sale or close a conversation with the client and he said yeah it's really common because most coaches what they do is they have a conversation with the client and maybe they have one or two i usually have two conversations the first is a two-hour conversation a complimentary two-hour conversation with the client and most coaches do 30 minutes and i can tell you if you had a 30-minute conversation with someone and it was a great conversation and, you know, it was enjoyable and, you know, not life changing, but, but, but nice and helpful and, you know, solved a few things. Would you give them a, a month's paycheck or would you give them three months paycheck? Y you probably wouldn't. So when I'm working with clients, I give them two hours of my time. And instead of selling the concept of coaching, I sell the experience of coaching. So I give them two hours, and usually within two hours, my client is ready to sign up. Now that wasn't always the case. I started with 30 minutes, and the client at the end of 30 minutes would say, oh yeah, Dermot, that was nice. That was enjoyable. Now nice and enjoyable as a coach won't get you paid. I used to think it would. I, I used to think nice, enjoyable. Oh, that was okay, Dermot. Yeah. That's not going to get you paid as a coach. What will get you paid as a coach is one thing and one thing only. Impact. When you impact somebody in such a way that they go, wow, I don't have the money, but I'm going to find the money. I did not have the money to pay Steve Chandler the money he was asking. I mean, it was more money than I had ever thought a coach should get paid. But coaches get paid this all the time. Why? Because they're impactful. 
Clients are only interested in one thing and one thing only. Can you help me? And the level to which you can help them, the impact that you make on them, that's what sells the coaching. So I came to Steve anyway and I said, okay, Steve. I said, um, what should I do after the client says yes? Because now the clients are saying yes. And here's what I was doing. I was saying to the client, okay, well, that's great, wonderful. <laughs> Oh my God. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh my God, I can't believe it. They said yes. But what do I do now? Right? Sounds funny, but it was true. And I would say, well, okay, well, well that's, this is wonderful, John. I, I, I'm really happy that you're going to do some coaching with me. That's wonderful. And um, why don't I, uh, why don't I uh, email you? Uh, I'll email you. Um, uh, like a contract and, and, and then you email me the contract back and then I'll email you um, some times and dates that I'm available and then you just email me back when you're available and, and let's pray to God it all works out that you, that you email me the same dates that I'm emailing you. And this is how, it, this is how I was doing it, right? Now that worked. But I have to tell you, it wasn't very professional. Like it worked, but it was not professional. There was no leadership in the close. Now, it, 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 if we think about leaders, we think about people who guide people. We think about people who are very clear about how to move forward. We think about um, leadership as a way of thinking, as a way of being, as a way of doing. This is leadership. And what I was doing was kind of more kind of email ship. And I would eventually, you know, get the client to, to, to sign the contract and do all of that stuff. But it would take a week or two weeks. And I have lost clients because in the emailing, I don't know, mania of emailing. You see, I, I'm trying to think, enthusiasm has a half-life. And so when the client says yes to coaching, there's enthusiasm there. But that enthusiasm has a half-life. Think about it in terms of like, do you ever go to a concert? And the next day you tell all your friends, oh my God, that concert was wonderful. I can't believe it. Springsteen was absolutely incredible. And you tell everybody and you're so excited. And then about two weeks later, oh yeah, we went to Springsteen. Yeah, it's pretty good. And uh, about a month later, you're like, did we, go to, did we go to Springsteen? So in order to show leadership in a close, in order to close a conversation with a client, it's got to be done it's got to be done within a window and everyone has their own window. So Steve said to me, Dermot, that's, that's not the way you're doing things is, is really unprofessional and uh, it's not very helpful. So let me, let me, let me train you in a better way. So you have a conversation with a client and let's say it's a 60 minute conversation. Although I encourage you to have more. I encourage at least a one hour conversation. And if at the end of that conversation, the client um, says, I don't know, Dermot. Then you invite the client to have another conversation with you. Because it's not that they don't know. It's that they haven't had a powerful enough experience of the coaching that you're offering. Not about, never about you, always about the impact. And you offer the client another hour session. So let's say, just for our context tonight, showing leadership in the close. What to do with a client when they say yes. Two things that a, that a, that a coach, it would be very valuable for a coach to have. A scheduler. 
I use Acuity Scheduler. I'm very happy with it. It's a wonderful, it's very professional. Acuity Scheduler. And if you're planning on doing coaching online with a client, like I have clients all over the planet, Australia, France, England, all over the place. And the two bits of technology that I use that I didn't use before is the Acuity Scheduler and a Zoom account. Now, let me tell you why they're important for uh, showing leadership in the close. So you have a conversation with a client, and we're gonna open up the Q&A in just a minute here. You have a conversation with a client, and the client is, wow, this is wonderful, Dermot. How does this, how does this all work? The client will always ask you something like, how does this work, Dermot? How does coaching work? And once the client has said, hey, I'd really like to know how this works, or Dermot, I'd like to do coaching with you. How does it work? How do we get started? Now, that's where you move from coaching to showing some leadership in the close. Think about it this way. If you go to the opera and you're all dressed up and the tie was for you tonight, Susan. I thought I'd wear my special tie. Um, you're all dressed up when you go to the opera, yourself and your, and your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or maybe your, your pet cat. I don't know, whoever you bring to the opera. And you get to the parking lot and you look around and you don't know where to park. There's nobody to tell you where to park. So you're like, oh, I thought this was a fancy establishment. I thought these guys had their, their stuff together. Oh, so you find a parking spot and you park your car. And now you're wandering around looking for the entrance. And finally, you find the entrance and you go to the door and there's nowhere to buy tickets. You're looking around and you don't know where to buy a ticket. And then finally you go in the door and you ask someone, hey, where do you buy the tickets? Oh, 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 over there, just around the corner, okay. And you walk over and, and, and finally you buy the tickets. And then you walk into the opera, into the main auditorium, and there's 2,000 seats. And, and, and you're looking at your ticket, and you're thinking, where's, J9, where the, where the heck is J9? And you're looking around and there's no one there to show you where J9 is. Now, what would that experience be like for you? You're like, I mean, the opera was great, but boy, we spent half an hour wondering where to get the tickets where J9 was, we bumped into a bunch of people, I spilled over the popcorn. They had popcorn at the opera, I'm sure. I'm gonna bring it just to prove. And uh, so the experience is not great. No leadership in the close. No, you know, the person has gone to get the tickets and now there's no leadership. So let's bring that back to now, how we show leadership in the close in a coaching profession, because it's the same way. When the client says, yes, I'm ready. Where do I sign? The coach needs to have the two things, the Zoom and the acuity. Absolutely acuity. If you want to do phone or something like that, feel great. So here's what I say. And again, everyone, this is not a, a prescription. This is not how you should do it. But this is just a description of how I do it. And hopefully you'll get some own, your own ideas on how you want to show some leadership in the close. Okay. So I say to the client, wonderful, John, I'm really happy that you're interested in coaching. And I talked about packages last week. So let's say I take out a package and I say, hey, John, here's some of my packages. Um, which one would suit you? Which one would be good for you? Three months, six months, nine months, whatever it might be for the client. Oh, Dermot, I, I, I really like this six-month package that you have. Okay, let me talk a little bit about the package with you. And I talk, you know, take two or three minutes to talk about the package. And they say, wonderful. So, how, so what else do I need to do here, Dermot? 
And this is where you step forward and you say, okay, John, so let me show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email you a link, and the link is to my acuity scheduler. Now, you can have the client um, open up the email that day. You can also agree to, hey, by the end of the day, um, open up the acuity and, and, and book in a date. Sometimes, uh, actually most of the time, what I like to do with a client is I'll open up my scheduler, I'll share the screen, I'll open up my acuity scheduler, and I'll say, John, pick a date that works really well for you. And I show them all the dates that are, that are available for that month. Again, you want to sign the client up. Uh, you know, you want to pick a date within the next two, one to two weeks to have the client to start to work with you. You don't want to... Some clients say to me, oh, Dermot, it's not really good for August. How about September sometime? I want to encourage the client or invite the client to sign up because um, enthusiasm has a half life. So you want the client to sign up um, as soon as they're, you know, as soon as possible for them. So usually within one to two weeks. And then keep your consistent. I keep it consistent with my clients. I ask them to sign up for if it's a, if it's a, six month or a three month contract, we meet twice per month for two hours. And I invite the client to, to meet every two weeks. But for that initial conversation, showing leadership in the close, you take out your acuity scheduler and you say, John, let's book a session, our first session together. Let's book that now together. And that's the first part. Second part is, John, I'm going to send you a contract. All you need to do is sign the contract and send it back to me. Please do that by Friday. And see, that's showing leadership in the close. I used to say, oh, I'll send your contract and just get it back to me whenever you can. Two weeks later, I'm emailing the client, uh, John, uh, where's the contract? I, I haven't gotten it yet. So showing leadership in the client is, is telling the client, hey, John, please have that to me back by Friday. And when I ask the clients that, they don't have a problem doing that. And it's always back to me before Friday. I even say before Friday at 6 o'clock. And you might think that's a little, you know, pushy. But it's not pushy. It's showing leadership. It's asking the client, if you're wanting to make an agreement with me and with yourself about coaching, then this is the criteria. So that's the first thing. I pull out the acuity scheduler. I schedule our very first session. And the client can set, schedule all their sessions after that. But the very first session we schedule together. Second thing is I tell the client, I'm sending you a contract. Please sign it and have it back to me by Friday, 6 o'clock. That's the second thing. And in that email, I send the client a link to the scheduler so that they can schedule the rest of their, the rest of their appointments together. And in that email, I also send the client a link and it's a zoom link and they're going to be using that for all our calls same zoom link for all the calls I used to do it where when they signed up they got a different uh, zoom link every time and that can get confusing for people because they start losing them in the emails oh Dermot uh, would you send me another zoom link I lost it uh, you sent it. it when I signed up two weeks ago it's gone in my email so I give them one Zoom link and I say, that's your Zoom link for all our sessions. So you take the schedule out, you confirm the start date, you send the contract, oh, I'm sorry, of course, and you send the, uh, the invoice also. And with the contract and the invoice, please have both of those back to me by Friday. And see, that's showing leadership in the close. Now, I didn't know that before as a coach. I thought that was pushy. And, and I have never had any client say, that's pushy, Dermot, or hey, that's very rigid. Clients really appreciate that I'm providing structure, just like the coaching arrow that you learn at Ericsson. I'm providing structure the whole way through the, through the coaching conversation and at the end when the client wants to sign up. Very, very simple way to show leadership in the close. All right, let's, um, 
let's open it up for questions, comments. Uh, we can talk about showing leadership in the close. We can talk about uh, anything to do with business building. Sky's the limit. Who will start us off? Well, I can one up you there, Dermot. We uh, we did. Uh, you go give two hours of free coaching. We once did three months of free coaching for somebody to land wow. a large contract. <laughs> wow, that was your big cut. You know what? I've I've done that with companies. I'll go in and I'll say to a company, they're like, "Oh, we don't know. I don't know about this coaching, Dermot. I don't really know anything." But and I'll say, "Look, give me three of your three of your underperformers." And I'll coach them for a month or for two months. And if they if they show progressive improvement in performance and effectivity, um, then we can come and talk. And they're like, "Oh yeah, it's a great way to get into companies." Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What else you got, Susan? What did you, what did what did you hear in that? Because you're one of the enrollment advisors at Ericsson, so you probably has, has as much to sh to share about leadership as I do in the close. Uh, I agree with what you're saying. You know, you definitely want to, uh, you know, once you've done your free, um, your free session and stuff like that, close the deal uh, quickly, right? Don't let people meander and, and stuff like that. And, and yeah, absolutely, it shows um, leadership. And it shows that you are, um, that you are also, um, Secure in your own right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, and it it, it it shows a level of professionalism that that people appreciate. You know. Yeah. yeah. Also, too, um, you know, to not that it creates a sense of urgency when you you know give them a timeline, but it also shows that you're in demand. Yeah, yeah. It, it, for for me, I. I used to not value my time at all. And so I used to like an hour session would turn into an hour and a half. And, <laughs> and I just do not do that anymore because I found exactly what you just said, that clients, they actually appreciated me less when I gave them more time. And I thought it would be the opposite. And it's not, it's actually, they appreciate when the, when the session is up in an hour and say, all right, you know, and again, making sure that you're, 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 you're within that hour. Um, people really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Susan. It's similar to my life as a, as a consultant, where part of our sales methodology is to ask for the business at the end of the meeting. Like you're asking for the work. Um, no one bats an eye when we do it. If you don't do it, you're gonna walk out and you're gonna look like, that was a waste of however long it took you to prepare and execute that meeting. But I think it goes the same with, with building a business like this. My struggle, because I'm not, I'm not yet building my own business. I still am going, I need to get back. After six months of late night classes, I took a little break before I went through the mastery stuff. So I have to get back on the horse to finish those six sessions. But my problem is within branding and understanding, um, I guess, kind of the power that I can bring to businesses from a coaching perspective. Because everyone's like, well, that's not your job. Your job's a consultant. I'm like, yeah, but we can make more money if I'm a consultant and a coach. <laughs> well, you know, there, there's, I, I was working with a, with, a, with a coach a couple of weeks ago. Um, and... It was really interesting, you know, he was a, a, a consultant from Switzerland and he worked as a, a freelance consultant mm -hmm. and did really, really, really well. And then he got into coaching and he went through the program and, and I think for about a year or so, he struggled. And, and then, he, then he heard about me and he called me. And... His whole thing was, he said, Dermot, I can't believe that as a consultant, I used to make six figures. And as a coach, I can't even pay my rent. And I talked to him, well, you know, what's going on there? And one of the things that he 
got an insight around was that he was trying to separate the two. Oh, I should only be a coach and not be a consultant. And, and, and we came up with a way for him to do both. Mm-hmm. So now he was able to go back to all his old consulting clients and offer consulting and coaching. Right. Very powerful. Very yeah. powerful. Yeah, so bringing that together, but then trying to figure out how to, to best position it, I guess, from like, right, like you, you're, you have a very strong branding and your accent helps it in a great way by being the Celtic coach, right? Yes. I mean, as Irish as I am, I can't pull that off. <laughs> I have a very Northeast United States accent. <laughs> I'm actually Russian, you know, I've just perfected the Irish accent. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you drank well, enough whiskey, it turned. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you something, my, my experience, because I've only got my experience about branding. Mm-hmm. And it's not, and I've learned this from my coach, Steve Chandler. Now, if you look him up, you think that he's the most ordinary person you've ever met on the planet. He's, he's, and and, and I mean that respectfully. I don't mean that in any derogatory way or negative way. He's the most down to earth, non-branded, non-marketed, and Susan's shaking her head. She knows, um, non niche person I've ever come across. And I brought that same question to him. Now, I, I was the Celtic coach before, you know, before I, I, I met Steve. And, and I can tell you in all honesty, Kellyanne, it actually hasn't really brought me any more business than if I wasn't the Celtic coach. And I, and I mean that sincerely. Um, I don't get clients from after spending thousands of dollars on a website, I thought, okay, it's green, it's white, it's Celtic coach, it's Irish this, it's Irish that. You know, I thought, oh my God, they're going to be knocking down the doors. <laughs> Not the case. I had that website built within the second year of my five-year, I call it, learning opportunity. Journey. <laughs> Journey. <laughs> yes. Um, and I went to Steve and I said, look, Steve, I, I, I think my problem is branding, you know? And he said, well, he said, you're the coach. I said, yeah. I said, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything for me. And Steve said that Dermot, what's going to do more than your branding, because branding is not, it, like a lot of people use social media and they don't get anywhere with it. Mm-hmm. because you can sell the concept of coaching, which is right. branding and the colors. And I mean, you, you look at my website. There's so much science in my website. Like, you know, in there's terms a lot of, happening there. I looked at it. Programs, <laughs> all that stuff. And, 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 you know, it's nice to look at, but it doesn't mm-hmm. get clients. What gets me clients time and time and time and time and time time again what built my entire business my business now is only referral and invitation that's my whole business i do Mm -hmm. not get any clients from my website or any of that other stuff i do that just as a hobby and you know whatever um and it's really simple i learned it from steve is you coaching is about connection and conversation it's mm-hmm. not about marketing. It's not about branding. Now, all those things are helpful. Don't get me wrong. But they're helpful to create a little bit of interest. Right. That's, that's been my experience. And again, I'm not bashing you know, social media and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it creates a little bit of interest. But what sells coaching, what builds your business, what gets you clients and makes money at coaching, is, is the experience. Right. And so, so my business today is really simple. It's really simple. And here's an experiment for you, for you, for you coaches and for you too, Kellyanne. Tell, to, uh, well, well, actually, would it be okay if I coached you for two minutes? Sure. Have your permission? Okay. 
because I think it'll be helpful for everyone. So share with me the name of someone you'd really love, either a name of a company or the name of, of, a, of a human being, a person that you know that you would like to coach, but you haven't approached yet. A company or a person. Oh, God. Um, I, I, we'll say McDonald's. Well, now, when you say McDonald's, is that, is that really someone that you'd like to coach? The, yeah, I'm going to meet with them on Tuesday. I'd like them to get their life together. Okay. <laughs> All right, McDonald's. Now, is this McDonald's as in the food chain? Yeah. Okay. All right. Really nice office in Chicago. It's quite lovely. But. I, um, I just saw that movie, uh, The Founder. Have you seen that? Uh, <laughs> I have not watched it. I've, I've boycotted them for the last couple of months because they're, they don't have their life together. <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be something, you know, I thought it was going to be like this magical story, but it's actually about the guy who just kind of destroyed Long the it. guys that started McDonald's. But anyway, that's another story. All right. So McDonald's. All right. Beautiful. Now, now share with me why McDonald's for you. Their business is so interesting that it's a, they have a corporate corporation. They have only 600 of all of the McDonald's restaurants are owned by the corporation. The other 24,000 are owned by franchise owner operators. The third one there is their own CEO and own op entrepreneur. And in order to effectively manage that business structure and relationships of what to, to impact all of their people and all of their crew that has 110% turnover, their leaders at the top need to, need to start thinking differently. Okay. And I'll let you challenge Pause their thinking. Pause there. Mm -hmm. What do you know about, now when I ask what do you know about the leaders, mm -hmm. it's not so much what you think they need right. what, what do you what do you actually know about what the leaders are struggling with I think the leaders from around the world are each struggling with their own direction right they each have their own path and their paths are not aligned to be the most effective now, now where did where did you come by that information we originally were trying to work with Europe and then they had one thing and then the U S engaged us. They wanted something different. And then someone else put on their big boy pants and said, Nope, I'm in charge. So now we got to do it all over again. Okay. All right. So, so, you, so your information is based on some homework that you've done. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Yes. Right. Beautiful. Cause that's, that's, that's the track. All right. So now Kellyanne, what do you, what do you feel you could bring to the table as a coach to these leaders? Like what, what, what could you help them with? What are you bringing to the table? Yeah. So I think I'm bringing in the opportunity for them to talk candidly about what their goals are without having their goals as a business, without having like the underlying business fixer mentality in the conversation because as many conversations as we've had with them coming in as a consultant like we need to bring 20 people in to answer this question and i'm just sitting there like no 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 we need to understand from them like and help them help them understand the third direction before we can fix whatever their problem is so i think pushing that first pass first before we come in with a fixing okay. <laughs> now now Let's say that you were to work with, let's say that you were to astonish McDonald's into working with you. Mm -hmm. How would you, what's one small thing that you already know how to do, or maybe, maybe we'll come to you on how to astonish McDonald's to want to work with you.
خبرش باید تمام I have no idea. And, and, and that's usually, that's the correct answer, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so a question like that, let's sit for a moment. Because it's a question that you've never asked yourself. That's why the correct answer is, I don't know. Because <laughs> right. you've never thought about it. Now, no. when nothing is sure, you know, everything is possible. So, so let's play with this for a moment, if, if we may. Are, 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 we, are we okay still? Yeah. Okay, all right. As long as, as, long as Barb, Susan, and Jennifer are okay. <laughs> Very helpful to everybody, I guarantee you. Okay. Because I'm bringing this around to, to, to branding and to, to, to helping these coaches build their business. So mm -hmm. it's very helpful for us to have this talk. Okay. Great. All right. So I'm going to ask you the question again, Kellyanne. And I'm going to invite you just to allow the question to sit. Not so much think about the answer, but just allow the question to rumorate in your mind for a moment. Okay? Mm -hmm. right. So how might you... What would be one small way that you could astonish McDonald's into working with you? Now, by the way, for, for the coaches out there, when you ask a client a question and there's silence like this, you've hit a home run. All you got to <laughs> do is just let it happen. I mean, I don't know what would astonish them. I think. What would astonish you? What's something that, 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 that would astonish you if you were to do it for McDonald's. I think if they were would allow to let their guard down to determine what their like their true true north is, I think that would astonish me because um, they like to keep quite buttoned up and siloed. Um, I think if I, I mean. Investing in them is not going to astonish them. I've given them four paychecks of my time uh, already. So that's not going to do it for them. Um, that might be an understatement. No, no, not four paychecks, four salaries, four annual salaries of my time have been given to them. Um, <laughs> then I think to astonish them is, is just to ask them the question of, What's the question? What is driving you as a leader to, to want to be most successful in this change? And then from that, who are you, who are you looking to be most successful for? Right? So are, are they, is their goal actually like, give me a cheap technology so my stock prices stay high or give me a good technology so I don't have to keep repaying to train new people. Like what, what is their actual goal? And then allowing for their leadership style to be able to be tweaked to align to that so they can be the most successful at the project. Now, now if you shared those two questions with me, Mm -hmm. And you shared what you just said. I don't know about anyone else on the call, but if I was at McDonald's, that would impress me. And, and the reason it would impress me is because you actually took some time to ask yourself, 
what are some of the things that they're struggling with? What are some of the best questions that I could ask them in order for them to get clarity? And here's how I could support them. Mm -hmm. Now, that has got nothing to do with branding. Zero. Right, but without knowing me, I would need something to get me in the room. And the fact that I look about five years, at least five years younger than I am, usually does not benefit me with like headshots. <laughs> this doesn't. So, like, why? All right. So I'm going to ask you, the, I'm going to ask you the same question for the getting in the room. What would be one thing, one way that would be doable and would be easy for you? And maybe slightly even outside of the box that you could do to get yourself in the room with McDonald's. I mean, their emails are pretty easy to guess. Everyone gets emails. Yeah. What else? I don't know. If I can get in the room as a coach and not as part of a team, that might be easier, right? Because I'm being brought into these meetings. If I'm actually allowed in the room, it's part of a team. I just make all the stuff for them to go into the room with. Um, <laughs> so if I can go in. Let's try a different question, Kelly. Oh, yeah. It'd have to be like a super stalker first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Unsocial, and then find the right person. <laughs> yeah, no, no they, they've made stalking illegal, so let's not go down that road. <laughs> um, all right. What could you currently offer McDonald's that would get you in the room? What gift do you bring as a coach? that you could offer McDonald's that might get you in the room? Leadership alignment coaching. Leadership alignment coaching, okay. So how would you share your love of leadership assignment coaching with McDonald's? How, how might you present that in a way that would astonish them? Now, now let me give you an example of what I'm talking about because sometimes it's hard to kind of get past a question like that. I'll give you an example. When I presented this, my slides and my emails to Ericsson about this program coming up in October, I presented this really nice slide and I emailed a bunch of times. I said, come and let me show you my slides. And I showed them the slides and I told them all about the program. I sold the concept, the concept, the concept, the concept. But nobody buys things on a concept. They buy them on an, on a, on a, an experience. So I thought, okay, Dermot, how could I astonish Ericsson into wanting this program? In other words, most people go, how can I get that person? to give me 10 minutes of their time, right? Mm -hmm. Most people, coaches think that way. I did for a long time, I don't think that way anymore. So I thought to myself, how could I astonish Ericsson into calling me? And that's a different question. When you ask a different question, you get a different answer. Right. So I created a two and a half hour program, a class, a full immersion, a full experience, I paid a guest speaker $1,000 to come in for the hour and talk as if it was a two and a half hour full, the art and science of business building. Here it is in all its grandeur. Here's the structure. Here's how we're, the whole thing, a full two and a half hour class. And I, I invited 
some people from Ericsson and uh, some people couldn't come and I sent the whole thing to them and had them and they just watched parts of it and and and, and I got a phone call Dermot let's uh, let, let's talk a little more about this program so now that was a way to astonish Ericsson that was a way to sell the experience not the concept because I had done the slides and it was like yeah Dermot we already have a program and the slides are nice and you know, it's all fuzzy and let's all hug each other and sing Kumbaya. But when I, when I gave a, an actual a physical experience. Right. So how might you astonish McDonald's into working with you? And if you don't have an answer in this moment, I'm going to invite you to take that question home and to ponder it while you're out walking or in a relaxed, in a relaxed way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll continue to ponder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. What, um, just from our little chat there, we're going to wrap up here in three minutes, but uh, what did you get from that little chat? Anything that was helpful, Kellyanne? I think flipping the question back to how would I be astonished would ha allows me to think about it through a different lens um, to what I can bring forward. Like what would, what would shock me as opposed to what would astonish them to to kind of think through how I can differentiate what that experience would be um, and making it more of an experience, um, I think would be helpful, yeah. Yeah, one of the things that I do an experiment with all coaches, and this is what we're getting to this, and see that has nothing to do with marketing or branding. That has to do with slowing down enough to think about what is it that I bring as a coach? What are my unique gifts? What are my special uniqueness what do i bring to the table that would blow this company out of this company would be nuts not to work with me this person would be mad not to work with me what is it that i bring and then the question is how can i express that through an email through a letter through a, 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 a video through a conversation through an invitation through an experience of coaching how do i express that to the client I have more coaches, they come and they say to me, Dermot, I want to get into a business. And I say to the coaches, sit for a day, do all your homework on that business. Here's an experiment, works every time. Spend a day looking at the company you want to work with. Spend a day looking at who they are, what they sell, why you want to work with them, uh, what kind of product do they have out there, what kind of problems do they have, what challenges do they have, and then sit down for 10 minutes and come up with a way to convey what you've learned about that company. Sometimes I send a video to company and I, 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 I outline to the company, hey, I've researched you really, really well. This is what you've got going on. This is where I see coaching can help you. And companies are blown away by that because most coaches and consultants and people like team builders and people who want to sell them stuff, they just email them, hey, I'm the greatest coach in the world. Uh, I want to work for your company. Now, they get a 1,000 of those every day. But how many of those companies get somebody, video, whatever it might be, or a letter, or, or you know, get someone that, that outlines, this is what I see is going on in your company. Why? Because I've done my homework. And this is where I see I can help. I would, I'd love for you to invite me in to have a one hour conversation about this. And I'll give you one hour of my time, uh, a one hour coaching session. It's on me. I tell that to the company. And see, that's a different way of, hey, I'm a great coach. Can, you know, would you give me five minutes of your time? So let's bring it all back, everyone, to, to, to um, just to wrap up. The best way I have found to work with any company or work with an individual is to invite them into a conversation. The greatest line I ever heard from Steve Chandler was, would you like some help with that? And I thought, that's it, Steve? Would you like some help with that? And he said, yeah. There's people, there's, there's billions of people on the planet need some help. And as coaches, we can really help people. We're, we're, we're trained and skilled to help people. The greatest profession on the planet, in my book. 
So there's a, a link in there for the brochure. Feel free to check it out. We'll have another um, art and science of business uh, coaching cafe on uh, this coming Wednesday uh, at 10 o'clock. Feel free to come to one, come to all of them. And I really appreciate uh, uh, the questions tonight. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Kellyanne. Thank you, Barb. Thank you, Jennifer, for coming. And uh, I wish you all well, and I, I hope to see you at another one. You can take yourself off mute, and we'll, uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks, Thank you very much. much. Bye, all. Thank you. Good night Bye -bye. now. Good night, Barb. Good night, Jennifer. <laughs>